Racial Only War, or Rahoa, is likely the most insensitive tabletop game ever made, if it could even be called that. This RPG takes place in the near future, when all the evil, non-white races have overwhelmed the whites, leaving only a team of brave, white warriors to, quote, cleanse the world of all the vermin. However, this task is going to be very difficult for them, as while the game has an astounding selection of three guns for them to use, there are no rules to actually use guns in combat, making them ineffective, except in the hands of the enemies. The game also includes 20 different skills, with some of them, like diplomacy and athletics, being reasonable for the game, while others, like video games and clothes making, seem somewhat less effective for a holy war. The enemies players face are limited in variety, with only five types, all of whose names are racial slurs and whose abilities are based on stereotypes. Overall, the game's an unplayable and racist mess. This seems to have been made by someone who had Dungeons & Dragons described to them by a person who watched it played at a game store once. And while the views expressed in the game's material is very clearly white supremacist propaganda, this isn't simply the passion project of a racist, but the product of a minister for an obscure white supremacist cult. This cult is the Creativity Movement. The Creativity Movement was started by former US politician Ben Clausen. During his political career, Clausen was a member of the John Birch Society, a right-wing political organization that is staunchly anti-communist and tends to trend towards conspiratorial beliefs. However, Clausen didn't stay in the society for long, as he was disillusioned by their tolerant position towards Jews and created the Nationalist White Party in 1970. This party was directed at white Christians in America, but Clausen himself began to waver in his belief of the party and Christianity in general, and within the year of the party's creation, Clausen left. In 1973, Clausen established the Church of the Creator, with the holy text, Nature's Eternal Religion. This would be followed by other texts, such as White Man's Bible and Rehoah, This Planet is Ours. These texts, along with the five fundamental beliefs and the 16 commandments, would be the sum of the religion referred to as creativity, with its members called creators. Creativity is different from most religions in that it believes that race, not religion, is the embodiment of truth, and that the white race is the greatest among them. Creativity also teaches that there is no God, and explicitly targets Christianity, claiming that Jewish people create it to make the white race weaker, and that the top priority should be to smash the Jewish behemoth. The other beliefs generally boil down to protecting your fellow whites and engaging in racial holy war with other groups. Ben Clausen primarily tried to recruit neo-Nazis to his religion, with mixed results. While it maintained good relations with prominent neo-Nazis like William Pierce, Creativity never had membership larger than a few hundred. However, unlike other American hate groups, Creativity did find international membership, particularly in South Africa, which was still practicing the apartheid system. The church had no home for the first nine years of its existence, until Clausen found a place in Otto, North Carolina. At this new headquarters, Clausen established a school for boys that acted as a pretty standard summer program, with the addition of indoctrination on the goals of creativity and how to best serve one's race. Despite pushback from the local media and townspeople, this would remain the headquarters for the church for the next decade. And while things largely seemed to be going well for the cult, this would change near the end of Clausen's life. Despite Ben's claims that creativity was peaceful, and only acted through legal and nonviolent means, members of the group were consistently linked to violent crimes. In 1993, eight members of the church were arrested for planning on bombing a black church in LA, as well as assassinating Rodney King, the famous target of the videotape police brutality of the LAPD. The same year, another member was linked to the firebombing of an NAACP office in Washington. But these crimes were not nearly as impactful on the organization as one that occurred in 1991, when Reverend George Loeb murdered Harold Mansfield Jr. in Mayport, Florida. Harold Mansfield Jr. was a black Gulf War veteran and killed by George Loeb after an alleged dispute in a parking lot. Loeb was sent to prison for life, but with the help of the Southern Poverty Law Center, the family went after the Church of the Creator, seeking a million dollars in damages as well as the dissolution of the organization. Soon after the crime had taken place, Clausen appeared to anticipate the coming lawsuit, starting by selling the headquarters to William Pierce at an enormous discount, who soon after sold the headquarters again, this time at a market price. Clausen was also getting old at this time, now in his 70s, and began searching for a successor to the church. However, he was incredibly indecisive, with his primary choice being in prison, 
and went through three other choices in as many years, eventually landing on Richard McCarthy, a telemarketer. This would be his final act as Pontifex Maximus of Creativity, as on August 7th, 1993, Clausen would kill himself by overdosing on sleeping pills. Soon after Clausen's death, the SPLC went after the Church of the Creator, and when McCarthy failed to defend the church, a million dollars was given to the Mansfield family. McCarthy resigned as Pontifex Maximus soon after, and it appeared as though creativity as a whole was on its last leg. Its founder was dead, its headquarters had been sold, its leadership was in shambles. The church seemed as though it would soon follow its leader in passing. Despite the failing situation of creativity, 24-year-old Matt Hale saw opportunity. Hale was a college student at the time, and had discovered the Church of the Creator sometime in the early 90s, though he had a record of racism dating back as early as when he was 12, when he formed a group called the Little Reich at his school. With help of a number of creativity reverends, Hale had himself declared Pontifex Maximus, though this did cause a divide in the church, with many creators leaving during the period when Hale was the leader. Despite the loss of longtime creators, Hale revitalized creativity, renaming it to the World Church of the Creator, and creating a website for the organization. The website would serve to attract people all across the country and world, with specific subsites made for different states, as well as a number of European nations and South Africa. Also of note was a site made specifically for children, though it was later revealed that this website was more so for attracting media attention than actually indoctrinating children into joining the movement. And attract media attention it did, as Hale made repeat appearances on a number of national TV news programs and was described by a New York Times columnist as the face of hate in America. We have the right to hate. Um, First Amendment gives us the right to hate. Nobody's going to make us love by hating us or by pointing fingers at us. Despite this apparent success, things weren't going nearly as well for creativity as Hale proclaimed. Hale told multiple reporters that his movement had nearly 80,000 followers, a number backed up by exactly no evidence. Creativity also continued to be associated with violent crimes, as Ben Smith, a friend of Hale's, went on a shooting spree in Illinois, and Erica Chase, a member of the church, attempted to blow up landmarks on the East Coast. Meanwhile, Hale was driving away the female members of Creativity, as he was described as a misogynist by some of the members. In addition to this, he continued to make enemies with Klassen-era creators, expelling Reverend Lombardi of the Florida creators in 1998, and causing many of that region to leave the church. This same year, he would also marry a 16-year-old, causing even more creators to leave, though this marriage was annulled almost immediately. Hale continued to alienate other creators when he called the 9-11 attacks a good thing, causing the creators of New York and New Jersey to disavow Hale. This eventually culminated in the Guardians of the Faith, the same group that declared Matt Hale Pontifex Maximus, voting to remove him from office. Hale responded by expelling the reverence of this group, causing a split in creativity, with the exiled reverends forming a competing group called the Northwest Church of the Creator. Hale had little time to deal with this threat to his leadership, as a court case related to trademark was threatening the whole creativity movement. The Titima Truth Foundation was a multicultural church located in Oregon that also happened to use the title Church of the Creator. In 1992, this church had received copyright to this term, as Clausen had never done the same despite his own movement using the term since 1973. Because of the confusion between this peaceful church and the violently racist group that Hale now ran, the Truth Foundation sued the World Church of the Creator. While Hale's group won the initial trial, an appeals court reversed the decision. Judge Joan Lefkow then issued an injection that forbade the World Church of the Creator from using the term Church of the Creator, and required them to remove the phrase from all their publications and products, as well as give up its website domain names. To avoid having to do this, Hale transferred the group's headquarters and publications to Wyoming, though on January 8, 2003, Hale was summoned to a federal court for a contempt hearing. Four years prior to this, the FBI had taken notice of Hale, particularly because of his relation to Ben Smith, who had killed two and injured nine after Hale had been refused a law license. In order to keep an eye on Matt, they sent an informant named Tony Evola, who won Hale's trust by confronting a protester to creativity. Within a month of meeting, Evola was invited to be Hale's head of security, which largely consisted of arranging his travel plans and acting as a bodyguard. For the next few years, Evola would wear a bug and keep the FBI up to date on Matt's activities. During this time, Hale was recorded as saying that he must follow the law at all times because he knew he was being watched. Despite this intention, 
Evola eventually received an email titled, Assignment, the request to find Judge Lefkow's home address. With this and a number of other cryptic taped comments, prosecutors had enough evidence to charge Hale with solicitation of murder. The same day that Hale was to have a contempt hearing, agents of the Joint Terrorism Task Force arrested him for asking Tony Evola to assassinate Judge Lefkow. From here, the World Church of the Creator largely collapsed. While Hale had grown the organization from 14 chapters to 88 during his time as Pontifex Maximus, the group fell to just five following Hale's arrest. Hale was eventually found guilty of conspiracy to murder Judge Lefkow and sentenced to the maximum amount of 40 years. With the help of skinheads, Hale attempted to turn creativity into a prison gang, though this would largely fail due to the existing prison gangs. While Hale was initially housed at ADX Florence, a supermax prison, Matt has since been moved to USP Marion, a medium security prison in Illinois. He will remain in the prison system until April 2nd, 2037, by which time he will be 66 years old. Despite the second collapse in leadership, creativity still exists today. One of the splinter groups after Hale's arrest, called the White Crusaders, has since become the Creativity Alliance and appears to be the primary heir to Claussen's movement, using the same structures, titles, and scripture. Another group, called the Creativity Movement, also promotes creativity, though the only resource I could find relating to this group are a blogspot that claims their website was recently hacked, though in actuality it appears to have been taken down by the British police. Despite these continued bastions of faith, creativity as a whole seems to be dying. Unlike the days of Clausen, when influential white supremacists were aligned with the organization, and the days of Hale, when the news medias would frequently give a platform to his voice, Creativity is completely irrelevant, save a conspiracy riddle on a website and a horribly made role-playing game.